Hello. In this day and age, the shaky slash handheld camera look is ubiquitous in film and television, but what you might not realize is that the handheld shot is not necessarily always completely just handheld. Sometimes there are rigs that are used to make sure that the camera operator's back isn't just destroyed after a long day of shooting. So today we're going to be taking a look at two potential options. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now let's break it down. But before we do, if you have time and enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. If you want to see more like it, a subscription is also very much appreciated. But if not, that dislike button works extra well if you hit it twice. So first let's talk about the actual origins of this look. And surprisingly enough, it's not action films of the early aughts or even a certain war film of the late 90s. No, it's the French New Wave movement that occurred in the late 60s. Now, admittedly, the handheld camera look had been experimented with in the past. However, the New Wave movement really was the first movement to bring this look to the mainstream. Okay, so now what is French New Wave? Well, essentially French New Wave was a rejection of traditional filmmaking methods, especially seen in the studio system. So one of the directions they actually ended up looking at was documentary, and more specifically, the shaky slash handheld camera look that came out of documentary to bring into their films to make them feel even more authentic. So that's also why we saw it in films later on, like Saving Private Ryan. It added a layer of authenticity that wouldn't have necessarily been seen if the camera had just been gliding through the whole thing. So love it or hate it, that's the reason why it's there. Okay, so now that we've got the base of history out of the way, let's take a look at how we can practically get this handheld look without totally destroying our back after a day of shooting. So first we're gonna talk about shoulder rigs, but just a heads up, like many other things, if you do it for long enough, the shoulder rig will actually start to hurt. It'll start to hurt your back and shoulder. So to avoid this, what you would do is actually get something called an ergo rig, which is essentially a piece of metal that comes up and goes back down and you wear it on a belt type rig. It's not too common that you'll see it, but if you're using a shoulder rig all day, it might be something you wanna look into. Now, shoulder rigs are great because they actually offer a good deal of versatility and stability without taking a ton of energy. So rather than holding a camera out in front, what you do is just go ahead and pop the camera on the top of the shoulder rig and then wear it on your shoulder itself. So some of the benefits of using something like a shoulder rig is that you can actually move it pretty organically without having a ton of jitter. For short periods of time, the shoulder rig is actually not very taxing at all. And comparing it to the easy rig setups, it often is much simpler. Not to mention that taking this on and off is much easier than something like an easy rig. Obviously something like this isn't a perfect solution. One of the biggest cons that I can think of is basically you are somewhat locked at what height you already are. So because the camera is up here on your shoulder, if somebody is dramatically shorter or dramatically taller than you, trying to get them at a straight on angle can be a little more difficult. So if the person is shorter than you, what you can do is crouch down or kneel. Crouching can sometimes get pretty taxing on your legs, but don't skip leg day, I guess. And you can do kneeling, but often that'll get you too low. So what I'd recommend is actually using various heights of apple boxes to put your knee on so that you can kneel on the apple box itself and that usually gets you up to a decent height. Funny enough, Roger Deakins, the famous DP, actually prefers crouching in a lot of situations because he can still move around. But being somebody who doesn't necessarily want to do leg day all day, especially if I'm shooting a shorter person, it's not always an ideal situation. Another technique is actually to cradle the camera underneath your arm which you can do, and that can be an option. When the camera is on your shoulder, if you notice, the shoulder isn't perfectly flat, or at least mine isn't. So basically what you want to do is watch the horizon. It can be excusable, especially if you're in kind of a chasing scene or a running scene, it can be pretty much unavoidable. However, if you're just trying to get that natural organic movement and you're still seeing that shift, it can be something that really says beginner to a lot of people. Okay, now I'm gonna go over my specific 6K Pro shoulder rig setup. Keep in mind that I usually use these parts across a variety of camera builds, so it's not going to be entirely specific to the 6K Pro, but I'm just going to tell you how I build mine. For the base, I use the Small Rig VCT14 adapter. 
Now, this base plate is really made for bigger cameras. However, I found that the rig that I built here for the 6K Pro actually works perfectly with the VCT plate. You'll notice on this build that I actually attached the Nucleus N wireless follow focus straight to the build, which can be seen as sacrilege, having a wireless follow focus hard mounted to the camera. That seems like kind of a bizarre thing. But just recognize that normally what I'm using is an assistant camera to help me focus. If I did this often, what I would end up picking up was the Tilta Nucleus hand grips, which are basically hand grips that have the focus wheels built in so that I can focus and change iris. Now let's hop over to the Easy Rig, talk about some pros and cons, as well as how I build my 6K Pro with it. Now, Easy Rigs are really known for being able to take the weight of a camera and allowing you to hold it out in front of you, kind of like a classic handheld style. But instead of you holding all the weight, the Easy Rig takes the weight through a cord and up through a metal support that goes down to your hips. So basically, it takes the weight from off of your upper body and puts it on your lower body. Unfortunately, because it takes this weight and puts it on your hips, you don't have that isolation that you would normally get from hand holding with your upper body. So a common misconception is that people think, oh, well, the Easy Rig is kind of going to act like a gimbal and allow you to walk around without a bunch of bounce. And unfortunately, because the supports themselves go down to your hips, it actually ends up creating more bounce in a lot of situations. There is a solution to this, and that would be the Serene Arm or any kind of stabilization arm that you can add to the top, but basically that takes the cord and adds some isolation. But basically the use case that I use an Easy Rig for is when I wanna get organic motion into the video without having to be stuck at the height of a shoulder rig and having to do some kind of odd kneeling or squatting. So as far as the Easy Rig setup that I have, it really shines more in fixed situations where you might want a slight sway back and forth that can add a nice parallax effect. It's also nice if you're gonna be handheld for a decent amount of time because it takes all the weight for you. Now, as far as my 6K Pro setup goes that I use with the Easy Rig, I utilize the Kong Quick Release to quickly get my camera on and off. It's something I really highly recommend for quick setup changes. Now, I have the Kong Quick Release mounted to a small rig NATO top handle, and that's attached to the cage that I talked about in the build video. And that's really all there is to it. As long as you have a top handle on your 6K Pro, you are good to go. Now, definitely keep in mind, if you use the top handle, don't just attach it with the quarter 20 on the top of the 6K Pro. I know it can be tempting, but basically the quarter 20 on the top of the camera is meant exclusively for accessories and can actually break if you use it to try and support the camera. So don't do that. And those are two options I've found to get the handheld look. They're obviously not the only two options on how to get a handheld look. However, they are two options that allow me to save my back and be less fatigued after a day of trying to get handheld shots. Cinematography is a highly subjective art with a ton of different ways to do different things. So if you have other options and other handheld rigs that you like to use, let us know down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you wanna see more like it. As always, I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.